So glad that all of you are here for class today. My name is Kelsey and I am the host of Code Joy and I'm also going to be one of your teachers today and this is Matt. Hi Kelsey, how are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you doing today Matt? I'm doing very well. I'm a little <laughs> out of focus but apart from that I'm doing well. <laughs> we'll fix your focus in just a little bit so you're a little less blurry but uh, Matt is our director and our producer here at Code Joy. And he also is going to be monitoring all of the comments that are coming in on Facebook and YouTube and all the different places that we're streaming live. So whether you're on our Zoom call with us and you want to use the chat feature there or, um, or if, you are, uh, if you have a question, you can raise your hand like I taught you to do before. Um, or if you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube and you have a comment or a question, you can leave that live and we can see it and Matt can address your questions, right Matt? Yes, I can. All right, very cool. So, you know who I am, you know who Matt is. So, I'd love to know who some of our learners are today. So let's go to gallery view. And um, if we can do that, go to gallery view here and we'll cancel our spotlight so we can see some of our learners here today. And if you'd like to introduce yourself, I'd love you to raise your hand and tell your name, just your first name. And if you had wings, what kind of wings would you have? How about Larkin and Django? Let's go to you guys. You can unmute yourselves now. Go ahead, introduce um, yourself. If I had wings, I would have fairy wings. That would be really cool. Would they be itty bitty fairy wings or big fairy wings? Big fairy ones with, with pink and glitter. That's pretty cool. I like it. How about you, Django? What kind of wings would you have? I would have bat wings. Bat wings. That'd be super cool. I like that. I like that. Who else would like to introduce themselves and tell what kind of wings they would like to have? How about Aviva? Can we go to you? We're going to unmute you. You can say your name and you got to unmute yourself, actually. There we go. My name is Aviva. If I had wings they'd be more butterfly wings it would be little butterfly wings that would be cool what color would your butterfly wings be monarch butterfly monarch butterfly wings that is really cool i really like monarch butterflies that'll probably come up later but i love monarch butterflies that's great how about you cat would you like to introduce yourself we'll unmute you if you'd like that's okay if you're feeling a little shy that's okay um, who else would like to introduce themselves? I'd love to have maybe one more person introduce themselves. How about you, Bridget? I think I would like some big like Pegasus wings, maybe rainbow. Maybe they'll be connected to a, a unicorn horn if I'm lucky. Yeah, I think go for all of it. Do it all. Yes, please. That sounds great. <laughs> well, it's really good to meet some of you learners today. And if there's anybody else who wants to introduce themselves later, especially when you first have a question or comment, you could say something like, I'm so-and-so and I would really like bumblebee wings. And I have a question for Adam. Who's Adam? Let me introduce Adam. This is Adam. And he is a really amazing scientist and teacher. And he even used to host a show on PBS called Bug Bites. And Adam is our bug expert. Hey, Adam. Good morning, Kelsey. Really great to see you. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Adam Lazarus. And I really love bugs and teaching about science. And so, um, I like to join up with Matt and Kelsey uh, for their show. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here. You said good morning, and that's because we are in Pittsburgh, right. but you are not in Pittsburgh. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> I am in um, central, northern central California right now. Let me show you. Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is where I am right now. Um, if anybody needs any sun, I hear you guys have been missing the sun. We have. It's raining in Pittsburgh, 
today. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I don't even mind going blind. It's so nice. That's great. Well, <laughs> the reason that I'm really excited to talk to you today, Adam, is that you're going to help us explore some bugs, especially bugs with wings, because I want to give everybody a quick preview of what we're going to make today. So awesome. Do, 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 do. Somebody, I think it was Aviva, said they liked monarch butterflies and monarch butterfly wings. I think Larkin and Django said they liked that too. So we're going to be making this little mechanical butterfly here. It's made out of a, mine is made out of a toilet paper tube. And if you have seen some of our other things that we've made, you can see I reused this toilet paper tube from another project. And can anybody, you can unmute yourselves and tell me, what are my wings made out of? <laughs> can you see? <laughs> Does anybody know? <laughs> what are they made out of, Aviva? So we're going to be making this little. Yeah. What are What are they made out of, Aviva? Can you see? Mac and cheese. <laughs> made out of a mac and cheese box. Yeah. I'm using exactly, exactly. Some people have some of these supplies. So to make this project, if you're making it at home or if you're making it here um, with us on Zoom, you'll want to grab some cardboard. And you could use thick cardboard like this, that's okay, but probably better cardboard is this like thin cardboard, it's called chipboard. So you'd wanna grab some of that, like say a Triscuit box. I stole that from Matt. <laughs> You'll need a, uh, a TP tube. You've probably got bunches of those around your house. That's why, that's why everyone was buying so much toilet paper so that they would have great building materials, right? I'm pretty sure. You want that. You'll want some, doo -doo -doo -doo, some scissors. If you've got a blade like this, you could use a blade and a cutting mat if you wanted, um, but scissors will be just fine for this project as well. Um, you also may want to grab, we're gonna be poking a hole in this toilet paper tube. And I found that sometimes poking a hole through cardboard can be one of the most challenging steps. So a knitting needle or a sharp pencil or even like a screwdriver, a tiny screwdriver, that might be good. Um, and then you'll want some tape. And any kind of tape will do, whether it's like packing tape or masking tape or duct tape, whatever. I have masking tape here. Um, you'll want some markers. And then optionally, that means you don't have to have this, but if, uh, if you run into an engineering challenge, you'll notice one of my wings, I taped a rubber band on there because the wing was like flopping all the way over. So I kept the rubber band on there to kind of keep it secure. So basically, your cardboard box is what you're gonna cut your wings out of and you can cut them to look like anything. We're gonna go find some winged bugs today with Adam. So before you even cut your wings or draw your wings, maybe we can go to Adam and get some inspiration. Did you find a bug, Adam? Oh, well, uh, you know, my favorite insects are ants and um, doesn't quite have, well, actually some ants have wings, yeah. but um, see this little ant right there? Uh-uh. This is. Can you guys see that at all? She's running pretty fast. <laughs> Gotta chase her down. <laughs> we should have picked some wing bugs, shouldn't we? <laughs> True. Um, yeah, ants are my favorite insects, and I've been studying them pretty much my whole life. So, um, no matter what I'm doing, if ants show up on the scene, <laughs> you can bet that we're gonna find a reason to talk about. Uh, well, you said that some kinds of ants have wings. I didn't know that actually. So, um, has anyone has anyone ever seen uh, flying ants? Raise your hand if you've um, seen a flying ant before. We'll cancel his spotlight. Oh yeah. So some people have seen flying ants. I have. I don't think I've ever seen one. What do they look like? Uh, so, um, what what the flying ants are are um, new queens and also boy ants. So all the ants that we see walking around doing work in trails at picnics, those are all female. They're all girls. Um, hmm. And boys, boy ants are just made for, for mating, for making new ants. That's the only thing they do and then they die. Ah. So what, what happens is um, Quite a new life. queens, uh, yeah, new queens <laughs> who haven't mated um, are born with wings and uh, males are also born with wings. And mm -hmm. on a certain day of the year, and nobody knows exactly how um, they determine this, but all the colonies of a certain species within an area uh, will force their winged forms out of the nest at the same time. 
And once these winged forms see the sunlight and feel the wind, it triggers them to fly. And only once they're in the air do they want to mate. Um, and after they mate, uh, the female lands and she carries off it, her wings, never fly again. Whoa. The male dies, and queen did, and she seals herself off, and she lays a bunch of eggs, and she raises those eggs on her own stored energy. She um, regurgitates, she digests herself, Whoa. and regurgitates herself like a mother bird, like <laughs> um, to feed the baby ants, <laughs> and it's it's really an uh, incredible process. I'm, Most I'm queens sorry. don't make it. I didn't mean what? to say no, gross. Right what I meant to say was that life is beautiful and I'm so glad that that's how that works. So good. All right. This is great. <laughs> I think most people have totally. gathered these supplies. Yeah. So let's start on kind of our first process, and first part here. Kelsey. Oh yeah, Matt. Uh, before we get started, uh, we did have somebody, uh, Django, would like to show off one of the bugs that he has oh. in, at, at his house. That sounds really cool. Let's go to you, Django. Do you have a bug at your house? That sounds so super I cool. This, I found this fly. Um, I found this fly. Okay, you can't really see it. But, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe if you hold it on your hand and you kind of hold your hand up. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, look at there. <gasps> I found that fly. Uh -huh. It was near something and uh -huh. I, it was inside a thing and I snapped that thing shut and it killed the fly, but I still was able to find it. Yeah. So can you show that? Can you pull it up to the camera again? Because that might be what some people want to make their wings like. There you go. That's great. A little higher and a little over a little bit more. Can you raise your hand just a little bit more and bring it over? There we go. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so fly wings are really different from butterfly wings. If we look at my butterfly again, I'll go to the top down so you can see it. My butterfly, the wings are like, uh, you can't see through them, but fly wings are see-through. Um, I don't know if anybody else has a question for Adam, but a question that's in my mind right now is, um, so I'm gonna ask a question and then I wanna kind of do the first step of our process here and I'll let Adam think about it. So the question I have is why are some bugs wings see-through and some aren't see-through? So Adam can think about that, but the first step that we should do is huh. you've got your toilet paper tube and we need to draw some wings. So let's get your box. You're gonna um, probably open your box up. You might cut it to open it up, but un undo all the glue on it. We don't want it to be a box anymore, um, but undo all the glue on it and maybe find the seam. Here's the seam on mine. There we go. Peeling it open very imprecisely, but that's all right. And then draw out, maybe with a pencil, whatever wings you want it to be, whether they're butterfly wings or fly wings or flying ant wings. You can always Google those things too, so you can have something to look at while you draw. That might be kind of cool. But that's our step one is open up your box. There we go, now it's laid nice and flat so I can grab a pencil or a marker and start to draw my wings. You'll need two of them and they'll need to be opposite. So you don't want two wings like this, right? You want two opposite wings, and then you can use the the non the non branded side of your cardboard. Or I suppose you could make a Trisket butterfly. That could be something you could do too. But let's go to Adam. I'm wondering about why some wings are see through and some wings aren't. Well, um, it turns out that uh, the wings that are not see through. And by the way, we have examples of both for today. But um, the wings that are not see through, they are covered with these powdery scales right the, the butterfly and the moth has scales on it that are like almost like baby powder in their consistency really? and um yep there's a there's a common sort of myth that the animals need these scales to fly um but they don't actually seem to need them and if you rub off the scale the wing is transparent underneath similar to a fly's oh um, that's cool there is, however, a hypothesis that I'd like to put to the group. Um, the scales, the powdery scales all over a butterfly and moth's body um, make it very easy for it to escape from something. I wanna put the question to the group, why might, why, we never know for sure, but why might a butterfly and moth have scales 
what might function might they serve? You said it was to escape from something? To escape from something. Hmm. To reflect light. Uh, say again, Larkin and Django's mom, Jen. To reflect light. Maybe. So great answer. That definitely, um, they definitely do reflect light and the butterflies use that for other things like to send a message to predators or to send a message to a mate or, or a rival. Um, but the scales can also save their life. Hmm. What's the situation in which being covered with like powder basically all over your body might um, save your life if you're a bug? What do you think, Aviva? Aviva has an idea. Can we unmute Aviva? What do you think? You can unmute yourself now, Aviva. Yeah. I had two ways. One was um, so they were. Um, camouflaged and then the other way I thought was so some light of the sun can't go through the uh, through the wind the wing so you said that um one reason might be so that they're camouflaged so that they blend in with things so maybe the powder the consistency of the powder on their wings helps them blend in like texture wise that's a good idea. That's that was one of the ideas. Is that why, Adam? So first off, what uh, what was this person's name again? Aviva. Aviva. Brilliant answers. <laughs> so good. Gosh, I love that, Aviva. Um, so I hadn't even really thought about, but yes, the scales certainly aid in camouflaging. Um, especially on moths, right? Because butterflies are so kind of ostentatious and pretty. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I don't know, it may be important in blocking light for some reason as well. Hmm. well um, but another they hypothesis that they have is, is that um, the scales allow a butterfly or moth to escape from a spider web because it flies in oh. and then it's able to jump out and just leave a little impression of itself in the web. But because the scales easily detach, often the insect is able to get away. That is so interesting. So it's kind of like, right? um, it's oh. kind of like uh, when I'm at home and when I'm mm -hmm. near my cat, I get covered in cat fur. <laughs> and then I sit down on the couch and I leave a butt print in cat fur when I sit down on my couch. Right, so like, or like a snow angel or something like that. But it's kind of like, isn't there a type of lizard that its tail falls off? So that if something bites its tail, the tail falls off and it can get the whole, the rest of it can get away. That's right. There are a lot of animals, snakes and lizards that have uh, tails that snap off. A couple even um, are so prone to losing their tail that if they're even just startled enough, <laughs> they'll snap off their tail. and They don't even wait for it to be grabbed. <laughs> They're just like, you know what? This seems scary. I'm out. Go ahead and leave the tail behind. No time. Got to go. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Great. So it's yeah. also good to know that um, if you if you touch a butterfly's wings, like I, I bet that you should probably be really careful with butterflies if you're handling them. But I, I totally. always I remember hearing if you touch a butterfly's wings, it can't fly anymore and it'll, you know, it'll die and it won't be able to fly, but they can fly without the scales. Yeah, and one more thing. Who was it whose wings would be like a monarch butterfly? I think that was, um, who was that? I believe it, that was Aviva. I think, well, I think it was Aviva, yeah. yeah. Well, Aviva, I just want you to know also that um, historically there have been native people who have used, because you know how the scales come off so easily on your fingers? Yeah. They've actually used monarch butterfly wings for makeup and they would rub their finger on the wing, the right color that they wanted, and then put that like on their faces, use it for eyeshadow. That's cool. I mean, I put my eyeshadow on with my fingers too. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm a maker, not a makeup artist, you know? So they have brushes <laughs> for that. Sometimes I use that, but sometimes it's just a little little thing. There's been so many, um, I think there's there's been like a lot of different ways that like animal products and bug bug products have been used to make makeup because they're so brightly colored too. That's cool. 
And mm -hmm. as, oh. we're, as we're finishing up our wings, mm -hmm. uh, we do have a question from Kenji. He yeah. was wondering if Adam has ever found the imprint of a butterfly or a moth inside of a spider web. Ooh, that's a really good question. How about it, Adam? Have you ever found the imprint of a butterfly or a moth on a spider web before? So Kenji, thank you so much for the question. Um, that's an awesome question. And the answer is yes. And, uh, I, you know, I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but I've even uh, created that uh, impression before when I've tried to throw a moth into a spider web to see how the spider would try to get it. Adam, that doesn't so, seem very nice. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it was the circle of life with a little bit of a push. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm just finishing cutting out my wings here. Can anybody tell? I'm not making butterfly wings this time. I'm making an animal that actually has two sets of wings that I think is a really cool animal. Does anybody, can anybody think of an, uh, of a bug that has wings like the ones that I'm making? If we go to gallery view, can we see anybody's hands? Anybody have wings that look like this? What do you think, cat? A dragonfly. What? A dragonfly, yeah, I thought I'd make dragonfly wings for mine. So there's, that's what my dragonfly wings are gonna look like. I thought about doing like two separate sets of wings and letting them move independently. But I thought that would be kind of hard. So I'm leaving them connected with a little bit of cardboard in the middle. Um, Kelsey, as yeah. you finish cutting out your dragonfly wings, Django had another uh, insect that he would like to show. You found another insect, Django? Let's check it out. What? I've what had this for quite a long time. Do you want to tell what kind it is? Yeah, it's a swallowtail butterfly. Wow. That is awesome. Can you hold it up so we can see it? Good. We're trying to get it. It's very delicate. Oh yeah, very yeah, I bet you have to be really careful. You said you've had it for a long time. Where did you yeah. where did you find it or where did you get it? I, I think that in we I have, I have two of them. My dad found one at his work like two years ago too. Yeah, there it is. Wow. That is so you know, the cool. at the bottom. Yeah, so that's why it's called Gorgeous. a swallowtail, right? Because it's got those little Little point thingies on the tail. And here's the head, which fell off. Oh, that yeah. happens sometimes. <laughs> you see sometimes these a lot like in uh, California. That's really cool. I Mommy. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, I think Bridget had a quick question too. Uh -huh. I was curious about the wing construction. What is the thought on your wings being symmetrical or asymmetrical? Well, I definitely made both of my wings symmetrical. So the way that I did that with both of my sets of wings, if I'll go back here, the way that I did that with my original butterfly wings and with my dragonfly wings is that I cut out one set that I, I liked how they looked. And then I put that set upside down on my cardboard so that, or I guess I could do it like that way too. Um, but you'll just want to make sure that they're they're symmetrical. So I have both of my dragonfly wings kind of angling backwards a little bit and so i made it so that they were symmetrical are all wings uh symmetrical um adam that you know of maybe he's hunting for an asymmetrical bug he might be <laughs> he might be hunting for an asymmetrical <laughs> butterfly i think cat said she had a butterfly she wanted to show too did you have one cat i i am um... Oh, well, let's see, Kat. Did you have one? Yeah. Oh, the background might be. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at those. Yeah, put your heads behind it. Then we can see it better. Wow, those are great. Oh, my gosh. Those are gorgeous. Do you know what kinds wow. they are? Wow. <laughs> those are beautiful. Those are great. Thank you for showing us. That's really cool. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> That's great. Well, so let's look at the next step of our of our project here. All right. So you've got maybe you've got your wings cut out. If you have your wings cut out, actually, why don't you hold them up to the camera? Even if they're not decorated yet, I'm going to go back in after class is done and I'm going to finish decorating them because I will tell you that drawing in all of the things on a monarch butterfly wing but that took a little while. <laughs> so you might not finish everything in, but we'll get it working today. So if you've got wings, hold them up. I want to see them. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Wonderful. So you'll want two separate sets of wings. I see Aviva's got hers held up and they're still connected together. You'll just want to cut down the middle of Aviva and make them separate because here's where our toilet paper tube comes in. Um, our next step here is that we're going to poke, uh, or uh, actually we're not going to poke the hole yet. We're going to attach the wings first. So to attach the wings, this is where the tape comes in. You don't want them right up against each other touching. You'll want to leave a little space in between. And I'm going to kind of flip it over like so, because the way that you're going to attach them is with a piece of tape. So I like my tape because it's kind of wide, but this will kind of depend on the tape you've got available. So this is the bottom side of my wing, okay? And I'm going to put the tape on so that the tape is half on and half off the wing. And then I'm going to attach it so that the top side is like this. I'm going to attach it like so. I don't like where I put that. I'm going to put it more in the middle. There we go. So I'm going to attach it like this. That way it can kind of flop down. And then when we attach the string, it'll also pull up. So you'll want to put the tape on there so that the tape is on the underside of the wing, kind of the underside of the, um, the toilet paper tube as well. So let's go ahead and attach our wings to our toilet paper tubes. And let's check in on Adam. What are you doing? Ooh, where are we, Adam? So um, this is a honeycomb uh, tray that we pulled out of one of the hives on the property over there a little bit. Uh -huh. And we've been just eating it with a spoon. It's really <laughs> amazing. But now the um, we've left it out to see what the honeybees do. And now they've found it and they're coming and they're um, slowly eating up all the honey. Do, wait, do bees eat honey? They do. Um, the reason why they make honey is to um, store energy uh, for in times of energy deficit. So often this is during cold months. Mm. Um, and in fact, you could right now in Pittsburgh where you guys are, and it's what pretty frigid. Yes. You could, you could, you could find a, a bee's nest and stick your hand in the middle of that nest, and I it would be. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe in the, the high 80s, low 90s. Um, and the reason that it's so hot is because the bees are using honey um, as fuel to vibrate themselves and generate heat. Wow. So the bees kind of have the same reaction to sugar that we do, which is when we eat a lot of sugar. Oh, look at that bee. That is so cool. So it's getting in there. I think we'll get even closer. Honey. What's that? It's just getting in there and it's like diving its head in and it's eating the honey. Yeah, let's see if we can see its tongue. Let's try oh, to get in here even closer. It has a tongue? <gasps> Whoa. Mm -hmm. It's um, put my lens in a bit of honey here. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. It's for a little hard to see. It's getting honey on your phone for science. Sure. <laughs> it's right in front of the eyes, so it's kind of aimed down right now. Let me see if I can find another tongue somewhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, maybe. So does it does it like eat or drink the honey kind of like can a you see it's, or a cat drinks water? Can you see it dragging its tongue over? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. <gasps> so cool. I'm sorry, what was your question, Kelsey? I don't know. There's a good tongue shot. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I, um, so I was saying that like bees kind of react to eating sugar like we do and that they, during the winter, they eat sugar and then they vibrate and then that keeps their hive warm. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. Look at those wings. You can really see them with the, with the light behind it. It looks like he's got, she an got a little on his butt. <laughs> And she got a little honey on her wing, so she's having trouble flying. Oh no! So um, what I—that's okay, because what I've been doing is. Oh. Uh, I guess she—I guess she took off after all. But <laughs> I made a little bee bath here. Oh. And uh, over here, like if if bees get too honeyed, I pick them up and I put them on this uh, wet paper towel, <laughs> and then they have to walk through this little pool of water, and it washes the honey off. Oh, you made a little bee bath. That's adorable. That's great. 
<laughs> All right, let's check back in with our with our maker activity here. So hopefully you've got your wings attached now. You've got them taped on and taped on and they can go up and they can go down. Well, now we need to do the part where we pull them up and down. Yeah, that's looking great. Actually, can we check in on a couple of people? So I'd love to see what you're what you're up to here. If you want to hold yours up so you can see it. Oh, that looks great, Bridget. That looks great, Kat. Those are looking wonderful, everybody. Looking good, Kenji. Looking great, Becky. Yeah. Ooh, look at those. I like those skinny wings. Do you know what that reminds me of, Django? It kind of reminds me. That's looking great. Good job, Larkin. Those are reminding me of the key wings in Harry Potter when he has to go like chase the keys on his broom. That's what those wings remind me of. That's really cool. I'm also a big Harry Potter nerd, but great, great. Okay. So we've got our wings attached. Now we need to poke the hole. So if you've got um, normally something that I recommend is using a blade and cutting a little X, but don't do that on this project because I actually did that on my original one. And what was happening, if I really zoom in on the, the whole of my butterfly and then I'll refocus and it'll really, really, really zoom in. There we go. Is when I cut an X, my string started going through one of the, the slits of the X and it got caught. And so the wings were getting stuck in the up position or in the down position. So I know I, I, I normally say cut an X with a blade. Don't do that this time, <laughs> unless you already did, in which case you'll figure it out. Um, so to poke a hole, um, you could, if you have a blade, here's my blade. If you have a blade, you could just cut a slit, but make sure you do it vertically rather than horizontally, because if you cut a slit like this, your strings might get stuck. So cut a slit that goes along the same side there. You could do that. Or I'm going to start my hole with my blade just to get it poked through a little bit like that. There we go. I just barely started my hole there. And now I'm going to go back in with a knitting needle because that's going to make a round hole. And that's that's the kind of hole I'm looking for. There we go. Going in. There we go. So I want a nice, small, round hole right in the middle. And that is what my strings are going to go through. So the next part, now I kind of made this hard on myself making, <laughs> making dragonfly wings. I think I'm going to try and attach the string here, but that may not be enough like pull. I'm going to try and attach the strings here, but you might on your project, on your butterfly, I attached my strings over the end of the wing here. And if I look underneath this one, you're going to tape it on the underside of your wing, tape it over here so that it comes out and goes through your hole. And then both of the strings from one wing and from the other wing are going to come out the bottom here. Yeah. Okay. So tape your strings on the bottom of your wing and then the string is going to come out and through the hole and out the bottom. All right, go for it. Let's check in on Adam. What are you up to Adam? <laughs> Ooh. Those bees, they, 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 they found what you're up to and they're uh, like, just our honey. <laughs> watching the bees eat some honey. Um, do you guys get... Um... No, um, oh, one ahead. thing that I'm kind of hoping for is, um, so one of the predators of bees are hornets, like yellow jackets and bald-faced hornets. And uh, I saw some snooping around here yesterday, and I think it would be really kind of dramatic if a hornet came by and ate one of these honeybees while the honeybee is getting honey. Um, that would be very dramatic. Um, right. I think, uh, how, how do you feel about hornets? Because hornets are different from bees in how they sting, right? Like they're, they're the, the, because on Thursday or on uh, Wednesday, we saw uh -huh. your friend had a bee sting <laughs> and <laughs> you removed it live on camera. Which Circle was... of life. <laughs> so, um, how's he doing, by the way? How's Rob doing? The crazy thing is that. A few days prior to that, another bee had stung him in the exact same spot. So, <laughs> poor Rob. It was pretty sensitive. Yeah, I agree. But he's yeah. fine now. He's fine. Okay. Um, but as, as far as like the stinger coming out, yeah. Um, that is mostly just with um, honeybees. There's there's some ants who also have stings that get stuck in their enemy, but most bees and all wasps that sting, which is only some of the wasps, um, they can sting multiple times and uh, the sting just comes right out. It slides right out. 
That's cool. Yeah, so I've got my string taped on the bottom of one wing and I'm doing something in engineering and in even computer science we call an incremental design and evaluation. So I'm just doing a, one little piece at a time and then testing it to see if it works. That's the non-fancy way to say that. And so I've got Kelsey, it taped. There. Oh yeah, oh, Matt, I'm what's so up? I'm so sorry. Before, that was we, right? before we go too much further, we had two questions. Oh. Um, Gail was wondering if she could take a closer look at the string that you're using. Yeah. And Larkin and Django would like to know if the hole goes on the top or the bottom of the tube. Great questions. Let me show you. So the hole is going to go on the top of the tube so that it's going to go from the, from the wing, over the wing, in through the top of the tube. The hole goes right in between the two wings. So not on the side that the tape is, but on the, on the top. This is where we're going to draw the body of our bug to. Right now, our bug is just wings and no body. <laughs> um, but uh, And then Gail was wanting to take a look at the string. This is just some like some pretty fat string that we had lying around here. I think this would be kind of regular like yarn, but you could also use like um, embroidery thread or friendship bracelet string. Whatever string you've got works pretty well. You just don't want it to be wax string or um, like stretchy string. Um, you want it to be string that when you pull on it, it doesn't go anywhere. So friendship bracelet string is really good. Those are good questions. Um, yeah. So, uh, so if I take a look at the string here now, I've got it going from the top of the, or from the bottom of the wing where the tape is over to the top side of the wing. And then I'm gonna put it through the hole. There we go. I may need to make my hole bigger, but it's always easier to make a hole bigger than it is to make it smaller. So I'll reach in there and pull my string through. There we go. So I reached in. Now I'm pulling it through. So now let's see if it works. As I pull this, hey, it does work. There we go. So as I pull this string through the bottom of the tube, it's pulling that wing up and down, up and down. So the string goes from the bottom to the top and then through the hole. All right, I'm gonna do the other wing. What you got, Adam? Do you have a, a battle royale of Hornet versus bee? <laughs> I wish, Kelsey, but what I do have <laughs> is, um. A little mini carpenter ant that oh. has heard about the festivities <laughs> and um, will no doubt be coming to check it out. So what she's doing is, uh, my guess is that one of her sisters, because remember they're all girls, yeah, um, all already found out about it, and she's kind of following the trail back. Mm -hmm. But there is a nest of them that lives in this house. I'm pretty sure. So maybe she's just sort of wandering, and we'll find it by chance. Ah. Um, you know, very, very exciting news over at the honeycomb. Yeah, <laughs> there's a, I feel like the honeycomb is like your version of the watering hole. Like in Africa, all yeah. the animals go to the watering hole, you know, to, to meet up and uh, tell secrets and things <laughs> and drink water. <laughs> but here at, in your neck of the woods, you've got the, the honeycomb hive that's like drawing your, your honey brings all the bugs to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How's everybody doing with their strings? Are we making, there we go. Ooh, we've got some bugs like flying over to the honeycomb. Ooh, that's a good close up of a bee. I really like the bee's wings. You know, I've never really, I guess I've only ever seen like uh, bee wings, like cartoons. And I thought that they were really small. I mean, they're not like big, like a butterfly's wings, you know, but they're attached a little bit differently from how I thought they were too. That's cool. And can you see how many wings there are? Uh, looks like two. Are there more than two? Mm -hmm. Underneath the two longer wings that we see are actually two shorter wings. Oh, wow. So they have like compound wings. Is that right? Yeah. It's a little hard to see, but you can just see in between yeah yeah i can see them they're overlaying on the butt they're really transparent yeah. that's so cool how they're so see-through too that's great i think did we have a question from django Hi. Django. yeah did you have a question man we'll go to you adam what's that black stuff there the black stuff there is it honey uh so what it is great question question um what that is is um it it's a 
black plastic mat that has honeycomb etched into it in plastic. And that kind of is thought to help the bees start their honeycomb cells like these right here. Oh. Um, and so it's black plastic with honey on it. Oh. Uh. So it's not that the honey is black, it's that the stuff underneath the honey is black and the honey is kind of see-through. Correct. The honey is that normal golden brown that you're used to seeing in honey. Cool. Well, let's check in on our maker project here because I've now got my string going from the top and through both of the pieces here. And now maybe yours is working too. Now, when I pull on the strings, the wings flap. And this one, I think it's maybe because the wings are a little bit lighter weight. And I think also because my hole on this one is better. This one's my, my third version of these. I made like a prototype version just to kind of like make sure it worked. And then I made this one and I really liked how that turned out. And now this is my third one. And you guys, I think I'm getting better at this with every time I make it. This one's turning out really good. So if you're loving how your project is turning out, great. But even if you're not loving how it's turning out, make another one, it'll be better, I promise. Now that you've like done it once and learned from it, this is, I, I think, I don't know if this is the maker credo or not, but it should be. Uh, don't like how it turned out, make it again, right? <laughs> uh, but now once you've got your, your wings in through there, well, now you can go back and you can start to decorate your wings if you've got some marker or some craft supplies or something, or even draw, start to draw a body on. Hey, that looks like a really big bug, Adam. It's a really big bug that also has wings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I wanted to point it out. You know, if you're tuning in uh, for, uh, if you're tuning in from Facebook or YouTube, if you haven't started this project yet, perhaps you will turn your project into puppy dog ears <laughs> flapping up and down. What's your dog's name? This is uh, Marisol. It's my friend's dog. Uh, but hi, Marisol. Um, yeah. yeah. We have a good history together. Yeah. Right? Hi. Good girl. What good oh, girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So are there, uh, are there certain, um, does Marisol like bugs too? Are there certain bugs that she likes or doesn't like that she's had encounters with? That not that I, huh. you know, not that I know of, but the dogs that I've had in my life um, eventually grew to like bugs. And I used to have uh, this <laughs> one dog when I'd go looking uh, for ant colonies and she would help me chew apart the log and it was really more symbolic her gestures but um they still meant a lot <laughs> she, but she was there to help that's that's she seems kind that's great <laughs> yeah. um okay adam i'm on the part of my project where i'm drawing um i'm drawing my bug on and i already kind of made the eyes but i don't actually know if they're right or not do you know what what do all bug eyes look the same? Or are there some bug eyes that we can take a look at? Because I need some inspiration to draw my bug a little bit better. Okay, let's take a look at this moth's eyes. <gasps> wow, look at that. Can you see those little eyes right there? They look almost yeah. like sunglasses. <laughs> wow, look at those uh, antenna. I almost call them antlers. That's not what they are. <laughs> Although maybe the a fantasy version of this bug does. What's it doing with its wings? It's um, actually vibrating its wing muscles to warm them up so that it can take off. Oh, how, how big is it? Can, is there something you can put in the frame for like reference, for size reference? That is really cool. Sure, let's see. <laughs> I like that it's doing its little like moth stretches. Like, hold on, let me just warm up here, you guys. I gotta take off in a minute. Oh, there we go, that's a quarter, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, look at that. It really looks like tree bark. It totally does. And you can see right here, that see that little flap sticking out? That's mm -hmm. uh, from a, a, a second wing below. So the moth, like the bee, has four wings. Oh, wow. Hi, Adam. A friend on Facebook is wondering why the moth isn't flying away. Because it's warming up its wing muscles. It's vibrating them to catch enough to see it just took off. <gasps> Bye. So, so what it was doing was um, it, it, it had been cold because it hadn't been moving in a while. And it's, you know, it's in the maybe low 60s here. 
upper 60s. Um, and so it was literally like vibrating its wing muscles to warm them up. Like, you know how when you've been exercising and your body's super hot? Well, um, the moth was doing the same thing. That is really cool. I want to check in on, actually, I want to go take a look at Kenji's because he's doing something really wild with his wings. I want to go look at what he's making. Oh, look cool. Those wings, can you tell us about what you're doing, Kenji? What, what did you make those wings out of? Do you want to unmute and like talk to us while you finish working? That was a it's really so pretty. cool. Hey, can you all hear me? We can. All right, sorry, I'm using my computer mic today. Um, so I have some packing foam here. Uh, I don't know what I received this in, but I'm repurposing it right now because I really liked those transparent wings that we were talking about earlier, those translucent wings. Um, so I think my plan is eventually to take uh, the Sharpie marker or color this in somehow. So this is just that same chipboard cardboard and I hot glued it to the backside. Cool. But I wasn't sure where I wanted to attach the wings yet. So what I thought is I'd tie a small knot in the end of my string and then just put little small slices this way. Ah. Just to adjust. So you could try out some different different placements. So you're like cutting little slots in your wings and you said you tied a knot in the string. Can you show us that again? Yeah, so oh, the, cool. the little knot is right about yeah. there. There you can see it. Yeah. And so then uh, just put a little Little tiny cut here, not all the way through the cardboard. And uh, just tuck that in. Yeah, so you can try out different positions for the, the string placement. Those look really, really cool, Kenji. Thank you for showing us that. Hey, That's thank great. you. I liked the little beady eyes on that moth. So I'm making my eyes a little different color from my, my head here. Um, and I'm, I think, do dragonflies have compound eyes, Adam? They have incredibly compound eyes. They have huge eyes with incredible vision. Yeah, so, they have 30,000 lenses in one eye. Whoa, whoa. do they really, Django? That is so many. Yeah, they Maybe. either have 30,000 len lenses in both eyes or 30,000 lenses in one eye. Wow, that wow. is so cool. Amazing. I love that you know lots of cool things about dragonflies, that's great. Yeah, Django, we should talk. <laughs> I think uh, I think Adam might have some. Uh, for you, Adam. <laughs> oh, say that. <laughs> no, I heard it. Okay. <laughs> Happy to talk. Happy to talk. That's great. I'm gonna draw some. Uh, I'm gonna draw some little pieces on my wings here because I think dragonflies kind of like have little little veins kind of coming out of their wings like so. so I'm gonna draw some little. Little veins along the wings. What are those things on wings? You know, I thought I thought maybe they were veins, but do you know what they are, Adam? Like all the little like compartments that you see on a butterfly's wing or like Kenji kind of did his own version with cardboard too. What are those like lines that you see on wings? I have no idea. So they are veins. Um, hemolymph, which is the, um, what we call insect blood is pumped through those. And then they're also structural. Uh, to keep the, the wing nice and strong and flat while it's flying. Because it, it's actually quite a tremendous amount of force being applied to a fairly delicate thing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's always kind of amazed me, like how delicate those wings are, you know, and then how they can actually lift the whole, the whole bug. So what mm -hmm. did you say bug, bug blood was made of? Bug blood is made of something? It's, bug's blood is called... One moment, please. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, bug's blood is called hemolymph. H-E-M-O-L-Y-M-P-H. Hemolymph. Hemolymph. Uh, is it red? No, it comes in a bunch of different colors, um, but I guess normally it's sort of yellowy white, I suppose. Hmm. And some bug's bloods, like uh, ladybugs, has anyone ever picked up a ladybug and then they had this interesting smell on their hands, sort of a musty kind of bittery type of smell? Uh, Greg is nodding his head. Yes. I, I don't think okay. I smelled my fingers after picking up a ladybug, but I'm totally going to do that now. <laughs> totally. Next, next time. Um, same thing with uh, fireflies. Um, so they actually have toxins in their hemolymph and when they're picked up or feeling threatened, 
they kind of clench their muscles real tight yeah. and at the joints like of their legs they actually break uh the thin membrane between the plates of armor and push out droplets of their hemolymph with toxins in it um and that's what smells bitter and also would taste bad if, if you were a predator and you tried to eat it all right, so I will smell my fingers after I touch a ladybug. I will not lick my fingers because it sounds like they would taste very bad. <laughs> baby, baby steps. Great. Baby steps. I think um, yeah. Django and Larkin had a cool book that they wanted to show us. What book do you guys have there, guys? Got to unmute yourself. There you go. It's called 5,000 Awesome Facts, and I found me 100 Incredible Insect Facts. Whoa. And I found, and also, I found that beetles use their legs to clean their antennas. That is cool. That's a great fact. You know, so cool. I'm gonna put, you guys have a picture of a dragonfly there. Can you hold it up? Because I'd love to see if dragonfly have antenna. Does it look like they have antenna? I don't think they do, actually. Oh, I love the colors on that. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for showing me. That's a dragonfly. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, so just um, dragonfly have very, very small antennae, but if you look around the mouth, super, super close up, you can see that they do in fact have antenna. That's cool. Well, for you guys that are making hmm. a along at home, I know mine is working great just how it is. So if yours is working great, just pulling these strings like this, I added a little a little pull mechanism. Something I learned from um, Dave last week, Dave English, our puppeteer, was that um, sometimes just pulling on strings doesn't work very well. And I was finding on my butterfly that that was true, especially because that string was getting stuck in it. So I made this little pull mechanism with a pipe cleaner. So if you want to add that to the bottom here, you could grab a pipe cleaner or a bread tie. What's that called? A um, twisty tie, something like that. You could add a pull mechanism to the bottom of your bug that you're making. You could also add, you know, legs down here. You could poke some pipe cleaners through. I did add antenna for my butterfly out of some pipe cleaners. So you might do that. Um, or you may find like my original butterfly, I think it's because the wings were so heavy that the wings were like flopping all the way over here. So if you need to anchor your wings, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You might use a, a rubber band and you could cut it like so. And then you could tape your rubber band onto your wing. You could do it onto the top or I think since I'm anchoring my string in the middle, I'm gonna put this in the middle as well, like so. And then whatever position you want to be up. Now, I don't want it to go over halfway. So there's the halfway point. So I'm um, drawing my rubber band taut at that point. And now I'm gonna tape it on there right at that point. Actually, I need to tear the tape first, that would help. So I don't want it to go all the way over there. I don't want it to go beyond about there. So I'm gonna use my rubber band to anchor my wing so that it doesn't, it doesn't flop over. So if you're having that trouble too, that is one, um, one way that you could do that. So now it won't, it won't flop over farther than it needs to. And I wasn't really having a trouble with that with this particular project, but some people might be. So let's go take a look at, let's take a look at, oh, wow. Oh my God. So, so Django, you know, I, so somebody asked about a uh, dragonfly antenna and I just wanted to show them to you. First point out, uh, visual evidence of Django's amazing fact about the eyes of dragonflies. Uh, we can see there are two compound eyes here, um, each full of zillions of facets, I guess 16 to 30,000 according to Django. Um, I, somebody asked about dragonfly antennae. Can anyone see them here? Yeah, they're really tiny. Right? Super small. I actually remembered them being more right around here, but they're not. Um, here is one here. Here's one here. So easy to miss. By the way, dragonfly babies live. Like over there. I have no idea what dragonfly babies look like. You want the wings to go where? Oh, okay. Does anyone know where they live? Oh, 
where they live. Um, I don't know where dragonfly babies live. Is this the setup to a joke? In the dragon house. No. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so dragonfly uh, babies or nymphs as they're called are aquatic and have gills and live underwater and they hunt um, tiny fish and little tadpoles and uh, other aquatic insects. Cool. So they start out their life in the in the water and then they grow up to fly in the air. Yep, that's, that's right. Great. Well, based on the picture that Django and Adam showed me, I made the eyes way bigger because it turns out the dragonflies have gigantic eyeballs. So okay. I have adjusted my art project based on true science. Let's see. So we have just a couple minutes left in our class today. I'd love to go to gallery view and whatever state of doneness your project is in, let's all show them off. Let's all hold them up to the camera and make your projects flutter and flap and fly. Ooh, looks great, Bridget. Let's spotlight one at a time. Keep holding them up, everybody. And we're gonna come spotlight you and show off your project. Wow. It's an ice cream bug. It's an ice cream Aww. bug. <laughs> He's got ice so cream good. eyes and I need one more to put a little stinger on the back. <laughs> a little ice cream cone. A little ice cream cone stinger. That's great. That's great. Next. Oh, wow. Yeah. That turned out really great, Django. That's awesome. I love those little wings. Yeah, look at those nice butterfly work, wings. I like that you guys put the wings <laughs> on the bottom and they're, the, they're doing this sort of like, uh, that's really cool. Did, did um, Larkin keep her wings attached together? Yeah, cool. That's great. Awesome. Who next? Let's go to Kat. Let's show yours, Kat. Show yours, Kat. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Look at those wings you're drawing. Oh my goodness. Those are beautiful. I can't wait to see what that looks like done. <laughs> Let's take a look at Becky's. Yeah, oh, you made a, a lady. Adorable. I like that you put a Becky, face that's on so beautiful. Of yours too. That's so cute. <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to Kenji's. Let's check out his. Wow, you're starting to paint yours too. Do you have a paintbrush that you're using? That's cool. Those are great. Wow. Yeah, those wow, are awesome. That's awesome. Hey. Look at Aviva's. Very nice. Let's look at yours, Aviva. Oh my gosh! I love your monarch butterfly. So White spots around the edges of the wings. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Um, when my brother was painting um, a radiator, though, he used to paint that so the drips of paint would paint on it, and then I peeled it off to use as oh my gosh that's hard. such a great idea so those are paint drippings they yeah and the the antenna are hot glue wow those are made of hot glue that you also peeled up that is so awesome crazy, Aviva. i love it well just to finish out here i have a couple things i want to share with everybody so that you know where to catch us next time so that if you want to join in on our zoom class or you want to join in via facebook or youtube to our live videos that you can do that so once again we are code joy i'll zoom out a little bit because i have a couple kinds of information to share there we go um if you for especially for our makers who are making right along with us if you tag it on twitter if you tag cardboard bug i'll be searching that because i want to see what everybody's stuff looks like when it's done so i want to see all your cardboard bugs you can also tag code joy you can tag me, you can tag Matt. I'm sure he would really like that. We would love for you to finish everything that you're working on now and tag us on Twitter. So I'll rearrange these a little bit so we can see them all. Do, 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 do. Um, because you should also tag Make Together. That is our Family Maker Camp um, hashtag on, uh, on Twitter. So if you wanna learn more about Code Joy, you can visit us at codejoyedu.com. That's our website where we always post our new classes on Saturdays. So check us out on Saturday night or Sunday morning and we'll have our classes for next week posted. And if you really liked what you saw here today, we could use your help because um, we keep all of our classes free. We're doing all our classes free for Family Maker Camp. And um, 
we uh, uh, we can really benefit if you wanted to contribute to us via our PayPal. That would be really helpful. Um, and lastly, if you have any questions, if you want to um, email me, my email is kelsey at codejoyedu.com. So there's lots of cool information on there, so you can check that out. But thank you so much to Family Maker Camp. This has been a really fun day. Do you have anything you want to say to close us out, Jillian? Just thank you for joining us today. Um, please do follow us on Facebook. And make sure to check out makercamp.com. Um, fortunately, we have very supportive members um, of Make Community who are supporting us and putting this on, um, funding it for you all to enjoy. So thank you. You can check us out at make.co and makercamp.com. And great thanks to Adam, Kelsey, Matt, who is a little robot, but he's actually a really great person too. So, <laughs> oh, he, he does like to wear some costumes sometimes, at <laughs> Bears, but that, that's now public knowledge. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Have a great one. Aviva threw you under the bus. Sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you guys all so Thanks, much guys. for joining us today. If you're on the Zoom call and you want to hang out for a couple extra minutes, um, feel free because you can ask Adam any other questions that you guys might have. But we're going to end the stream here. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. You. you can go to more, and I think you can end the stream from there.